Hello guys, I uh, hope that you're good. Uh, this is a GTV's presentation about the Kant Amoeba. So if you have not uh, subscribed yet to the channel, please do that. My name is Ijaz uh, uh, Ali and I'm Associate Professor of Virology at Comsets University, Islamabad. Uh, before that, uh, this presentation, we uh, already have discussed other free living amoebas, including the Agleria folori. And today we are going to discuss uh, Acanth amoeba, which also is a free living uh, amoeba. Uh, and a free living amoeba means that this particular amoeba doesn't, uh, you know, require a host. Uh, you know, can live without a host uh, species because it can get something that is required for its survival from the environment where, uh, you know, it is residing. So a host is not required here, but of course it can also, uh, you know, thrive inside a host if um, accidentally it comes across some host like the human being and it can live there and cause different uh, pathologies or diseases as well. Uh, similar to Naglaria folori, no vector is required for transmission here as well. And it also has not adapted well to parasitism as compared to other amoebas. These free living amoebas, you can say that they are free uh, you know, uh, to uh, roam about in the environment and uh, find out its food and reside there. And they not necessarily would live inside particular host as in the case of other amoebas. Uh, the kingdom is protesta here. That's why we call them protists. These are unicellular eukaryotic protists that we are talking about here. They can't amoeba. Uh, and they belong to the sub-kingdom protozoa. So it's also called a protozoa, uh, you know that. And the acanth amoebas, they are eukaryotic organisms that do not fit into other eukaryotic kingdoms. For instance, the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom. Uh, although they share similarities with but are not plants or animals. They are different from plants or animals. Although there are lots of similarities that uh, are there between acanth amoebas and these animal and plant uh, cells. Uh, but still, there are differences uh, as well. And as for the amoebas, are these unicellular eukaryotes or protozoans are concerned, we always, uh, you know, take them for animals. That's because of their specialized structure, because of their behavior and different things that, uh, uh, you know, you have studied uh, in your books. Now, some of the aspects will be discussed in this presentation as well. So what are the current interest in acanth amoeba? Uh, why acanth amoeba? is important today because uh, it produced serious human infections in immunocompromised patients uh, and contact lens wearers. So the contact lens wearers must be very cautious and they should also listen to this presentation in its entirety in order to, uh, you know, uh, know about the risk or the threats that the Kant amoeba is posing uh, or the, the lens, uh, contact lenses that they are wearing, or, or, you know, offering uh, here. And <clears throat> there, we are interested in the Kant amoebas because of other aspects like their potential role in the ecosystem, uh, because they are, bacteria wars, they feed on different types of bacteria. And that's why they keep the balance of microorganisms in the environment. That's also something to be discussed in this presentation later. And um, the ability to act as host 
reservoir for microbial pathogens. There are lots of different pathogens, human pathogens, and pathogens that are causing diseases in other animal species that uh, uh, actually are residing inside a Kant amoeba. This is something very interesting and many, many students uh, do not know about this particular phenomenon, but this is true. And many different types of pathogens, including viral pathogens, including different bacterial pathogens, just like step aureus or methicillin resistant step aureus or, you know, different pathogenic species of E. coli or other uh, microorganisms, they are all actually living inside uh, uh, a current amoeba and uh, they are acting as uh, host or reservoirs for these pathogenic species. So this is also creating a lot of interest in this particular pathogen, uh, you know, <clears throat> because uh, of these reasons. And because of many reasons, uh, they, um, we are interested in the count amoebas as model organisms, including this motility studies. So the locomotion uh, factor is there, the way they move, uh, the, the actin and myosin filaments that are involved here in this moment and the pattern, the pattern and the way that moment is actually happening, uh, you know, uh, a count amoeba uh, is used as a model organism to study 